Economic development is directly related to getting access to high quality public education. Just like buying a home, businesses looking to establish themselves focus on the big three. Location, location, location. Employers know that they're more likely to attract and retain the level of talent that they want when their employees have access to high quality public education for their children. College and career readiness. Not sure if you're familiar with that buzzword, but it really is the essence and purpose of formal education. At the end of the K-12 programming, our end products need to have the skills and knowledge necessary to either enter the labor market immediately or ensure acceptance into post-secondary colleges and institutions. We serve the same community. Your kids are our kids. We have a direct relationship to one another. The stronger the business community, the stronger the schools. The more successful the schools are, the more successful the business community. Brandywine has had a long and proud tradition of high quality academic programming for all students, all grade levels and all content areas. From reading specialists supporting struggling readers, to the vast array of AP classes, to the rigorous International Baccalaureate program, and has resulted in our secondary programs of study. For our presentation this evening, we have decided to focus on one particular program, Design and Engineering. Not because this pathway is better than any of our other pathways, but because of the way it was developed and its impact across all content areas and courses. Think back to what you did in shop class in middle school. I can still remember exactly what I made, or what I tried to make, a whale cutting board for my mom. I wound up cutting off the tail and almost failing the first marking period. The school promptly moved me into home ec for the remaining three marking periods, thinking it was a better fit for me. We have come a long way since then. Now our middle school students are really changing the equation and causing us to raise the bar at the high school level. The Design and Engineering program is a four course program at Concord High School, Brandywine High School, and Mount Pleasant High School. We've created uh, classroom learning environments that are reflective of very clear design standards that we've set. And so the equipment, the experiences that every student has in all three programs is identical. We make sure that students are comfortable to take action versus being comfortable to sit still. We want students to be working collaboratively. We want them to work as teams, but also have a, a clear um, repertoire of skill development. I loved technology and engineering, so I decided to continue the pathway my freshman year of high school, and I have just grown so much in engineering and loved being an innovator and anything that has to do with putting my hands to work and making new things. I kind of like math and science stuff, and this fits right in there, and it's more hands-on than anything else that I do at the school. So like in regular science class, we might do labs, but every day in here is like a lab. My junior year, which was last year, I started in level one. And then finally, my senior year, I was able to take this class almost all day, every day. And so I'm down here, you know, three and a half hours every single day, and I love it. <laughs> we are in a cycle of continuous development. We're not satisfied ever. We always want to make this better. We're excited about what we've accomplished so far, but we're looking forward to what comes next. As we plan learning activities, we focus on these essential skills embedded as part of the learning experience. The National Association of Colleges and Employers determine attributes the business community would like to see in their own applicants. I think you would agree that there is a direct connection to the essential skills we are developing in our schools to the qualities you are looking for in your future workers. But before moving on, I need to follow up on a point I mentioned earlier and explain how the STEM approach isn't restricted to just the integration of science, technology, engineering, and math. The core principles on which STEM are founded are equally applicable and valuable in all content areas and courses. STEM is now so much more than a skill set in Brandywine. It's a mindset. It's a way of thinking. Take a look at the design cycle and reflect on your own work-related projects. 
We think you would agree that many of the actions that are listed here, you would find in your day-to-day -day responsibilities. In a few minutes, we are going to walk down to the Brandywine High School STEM Lab and see a few groups in action. But first, I'd like to show you a few snippets of programming from across our three high schools to gain a deeper understanding of not only the academic rigor, but also of the social and emotional development of students while they're engaged in their work. This first clip is of a TEDx talk delivered by Mr. Jordan Estock, award-winning engineering teacher at Concord High School, entitled, Authenticity Matters. Probably the first, and some of you are hoping the last time you ever see a teacher open up their TEDx talk with a song and dance to Millie Vanilli. <laughs> now, I, I heard some laughs, but I also saw some heads nodding with me in the back, which tells me you know the song. For those that don't, Millie Vanilli was the infamous R&B duo that had their Best New Artist Grammy Award taken away from them when it was discovered they had been lip-syncing all of their songs. And they never sang a single word. And seemingly overnight, their fame and fortune had disappeared as public opinion put a high value on authenticity. A similar scenario plays out in one of my favorite TV shows, The Antiques Roadshow, where people from across the country bring in items to be appraised and anxiously await to find out if what they own has any worth. One thing's for sure, authenticity matters. It's ultimately what determines something's value and worth. This statement holds true in a world of education as well. If we were to appraise our students' educational experiences, we would find the ones to be the most valuable, the ones the students said really mattered, would be the ones that actually had authentic learning incorporated in them. Now, what is authentic learning? Well, it really includes four components, the first of which is a real-world problem. As teachers, we need to connect our students to things outside the four walls of our classroom. The second is this problem should require students to think critically and use higher-order skills like inquiry to solve this problem. The third involves the discourse in a community of learners, which really means that there should be a collaboration piece here where students are working in teams to solve problems, collaborating amongst their own classmates, as well as collaborating with people outside the school who are connected to this problem. And the last thing, which is probably the most difficult for teachers to do, is to allow student-directed learning to take place. So this involves teachers taking a step back and allowing students to identify problems, develop their own solutions that teachers probably aren't aware of, and really just be more of a, a facilitator and a resource for their students. Now, I brought with me today four authentic learning examples that I'd like to share with you because I think they meet even the strictest of definitions when you're thinking about what does authentic learning look like. These examples come from uh, my junior and senior level engineering course at Concord, and they all have the same theme, focusing on developing assistive technologies for people with disabilities. But again, I brought these examples with me because I think they illustrate what authentic learning looks like. In my first example, I'd like you to meet Justin. Justin's a young man in blue scrubs up front. He works at a local pharmacy at a hospital. At the pharmacy, Justin's job is to sort through hundreds of small bags of medication. Students observed Justin in his working environment, and they noticed that he had a hard time uh, grabbing the bags of medicine, a difficult time reading the small labels, and when it came to alphabetically sorting, he just cognitively had a difficult time with that. Another thing the students noticed was that the medicines all had barcodes on them, so they were able to, to, to use that piece of information to kind of drive the device that you see demonstrated here. In one. In five. In four. And just so you can, uh, a little side story about this device, the impact that this device actually had on Justin, when the students first met him, he was just interning at the hospital. And because of his uh, efficiency using the, the scan and sort, as they called it, Justin was offered a paid position at the hospital, which was huge. Thank you. Thank you. Impressive as the device is, I really want to highlight some of the learning going on behind the scenes here. So the students took apart a scanner and they were measuring here the optimal height and the right angle to have it at. So when Justin used it, it would scan the medicines 100% of the time. 
And here you see an early model as, as what you saw in the video. This was neat because this, this quickly got something in Justin's hands and the students were able to meet with Justin's job coaches and get feedback about how to improve this to make Justin more successful. In my third example, I'd like you to meet Brian. He's the young man seated between the three women. His job was to take two small dog treats and put them in a small cellophane bag for packaging. The girls noticed in observing Brian that he had a difficult time with the dexterity and the coordination required to package these bones. So they developed a system that was automated and allowed him to uh, be successful with this job with a simple press of a button. Once our device was functional, we took it to see Brian. Brian got acclimated to her device very quickly and was soon growing excited after bagging his trees. Good job. So it was cool to see Brian's excitement and confidence, but it was also neat to see these girls really grow. In a male-dominated field, I'm happy to report all three of those girls are pursuing engineering next year in college. Again, some snapshots of how the girls got to where they were. Here, this is them planning a sequence of the computer program they were going to write. There was a lot of timings with those motors that needed to be figured out. I'd like you to meet Rain. Rain's a young lady seated with the viola in her hand. Um, she's a fourth grader, actually, in our district who has cerebral palsy, and she really wanted to play the viola with her classmates. However, her cerebral palsy made it difficult for her to not only hold the bow comfortably, but she lacked the range of motion necessary to play any notes. So I'd like to show you this video of Rain's before and after progress with our device. So what's happening is, yeah. And so you see how that bow is crooked on the instrument. Yeah. And even if we straighten it, now try to bow a little bit. You can only use that much of the bow. Yeah. This actually swivels, so you can bring your hand as far out as you want. There you go. That's oh, perfect. Yeah. There you go. You get all that extra. Perfect. This team really focused on improving their prototypes. This is one of the first ones that proved to be pretty cumbersome. They were testing on their own cardboard viola, and they went back and forth from our school to their school, just constantly getting feedback from not only Rain, but Rain's music teacher on how the device could be improved. The value of these... <laughs> The value of these projects shouldn't be measured by how impressive the technological solutions were, but really by how authentic the learning was that got them there. It's this type of learning that's going to add value and worth to our students' education. And without it, we'll continue to see students lip-syncing their way to graduation, only to be exposed when faced with difficult challenge in life. When you're planning your next activities with your students, please remember, authenticity matters. <laughs>supposed to brag as a TEDx organizer about a community, uh, but I have to. We get so much bad press about how terrible education is in any community, and we're no exception. And I just want to make sure, particularly for the live stream audience around the world, so you teach at a high school, public high school. Correct. And you teach engineering. Correct. And this all happened in this, with students at your school? Absolutely. And so this really can happen in a public school in Newcastle County. Yes, it can. And it's working. Yes. Yeah, Wonderful. Right. Thank you for making a difference. Thank you. Wow. That's an idea worth spreading. I see even tears in the eyes of folks here. So he did an amazing job. Wow, I have watched that video probably a thousand times and I still get chills. And yes, it's not just possible in Concord High School, a public school, it's happening in all three of our high schools. In fact, when you visit the Brandywine STEM Lab this evening, you'll see a project they are currently working on using engineering and creativity to bring mobility and a sense of normalcy to a disabled child's life. What about Mount Pleasant High School? Anything like that happening there? Absolutely. 
When Puerto Rico suffered such devastation by Hurricane Maria, students reacted by resurrecting interest in Project WikiHouse, a temporary, affordable, easily transportable, and constructed shelter. Isn't this the kind of response, passion, and support you would want from your own employees? The rapid advancements of technology requires tomorrow's employees to be agile and adapt to industry and consumer needs based on the market demands. Creativity and innovation will be the keys to success in tomorrow's ever-flattening global economy. But creativity and innovation don't just happen. We need to provide students with opportunities to develop and hone these skills and attitudes. One such example is a project a group of girls tackled in a Brandywine High School's physics class. Students were working on the problem of constructing a tool that would help exercise a finger. Many of the current designs did not meet the physical therapist's needs. The lesson was based on resistance and pulley systems. Using the engineering design cycle, these girls were able to make several rapid prototypes by constantly refining their structure based on data they all collected. A formal presentation was given to a university engineer in a Shark Tank format and they won the pitch. As a comprehensive public school system, Brandywine serves a diverse student population. Like the business community, we believe that our diversity is a strength and brings great value to the educational opportunities and outcomes for students. In designing and offering academic programs, we are cognizant of real and perceived barriers that often limit viable options for our students. As educators, it is our job to open doors of opportunity, not to close them. As a result, we believe in matching students' interests and desires to the appropriate program of study to ensure tomorrow's workforce is both highly skilled and highly diverse. The STEM mindset naturally fosters interest and creativity. It inspires students to wake up early, keep them up late at night, and provide desire and motivation to pursue a career they are passionate about. We have learned that the earlier we can get kids excited about science and engineering, the more they will keep an interest in these areas all the way up through high school and beyond. This year, Brandywine fielded more VEX robotics teams in their elementary and secondary schools than the rest of the state combined. Wow! The interest and enthusiasm generated through the robotics program has led to the creation of maker spaces in each of our elementary schools, a place to explore, create, and innovate. The fun and excitement does not stop there. Given the STEM mindset, our Strings program was looking for a way to make a Star Wars themed concert really glow. A group of engineering students at Brandywine High researched the structures of bows and Arduinos to envision the bow project. Both the musicians and the engineers worked together using coding, 3D printers, and the engineering design cycle to create a piece of instrument that had the appearance of a lightsaber but changed colors dependent upon its movement and the music. They worked independently on this project after school during their open lab nights in the STEM lab. The result was a magnificent spectacle during the winter concert. Our goals include the ability to produce students that will be successful in college or the career they choose. They will be innovative, 
fail fast, and be resilient when solving authentic problems. Our high quality programming, coupled with the support from the Newcastle County Chamber of Commerce, will not only benefit us, but the community at large.